Hey amigos, thanks for tuning in again. This is that video I was talking about on the last video that I said I didn't know if this was going to be the next video. Namely, where I, uh, I'm going to pull this electronic ignition out of this bike that left me stranded in the middle of the highway and go ahead and put points and condenser in it, 5 ohm coil, you know, namely this stuff right here. And I got my points right here along with my fly weights that are on the back. If I had broken down on the side of the road with something like this, you know, something going wrong with this, well, as long as I carry an extra set of points and condenser, um, or if, if something gets out of adjustment, I can just fix it on the side of the road. It wouldn't have to have anybody come get me. So that's what I'm doing today. And um, well, without any further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and see what I can make of this. Okay, amigos, welcome back to another day. Um, what I've done so far, as you saw, I got my points plate in there with the points on it and the condenser. And But before that, I put the advanced weights in there. Then I pulled them back out off camera uh, because I thought, well, why not put a little WD-40 on the springs and on the advanced weights? Because uh, I read some of your comments on the last video last night about that and that supposedly helps the advanced weights last longer. And I forgot to put a little grease on the points cam. So I did that and I get it all put back in. But what I'm gonna do now is try to, uh, you know, gap the points and see if uh, I remember how to do it. I know I did a video on this on the iron head about three years ago, but I don't exactly remember everything I did, but it's slowly coming back to me. I know I could read the manual. Oh, and by the way, by reading the manual, <laughs> when I said something about putting points in this bike and ditching the electronic ignition because of the troubles I've had, some of you had come out of the woodwork to defend your ignition unit's honor. I'm not trying to down on the electronic ignition because, I, like I said in that last video, I'm not downing on it, okay? This is just what I'm doing. And, but I do remember saying one thing, and I was wrong about one thing. I said that this bike originally came with points, well, after reading my manual, late 78 and 79 came with electronic ignition. But back then it was new. So usually the newest thing isn't always the best thing. But I'm not trying to defend points. This is just what I want to do with this bike. There's no right or wrong. There's no whatever, you know. I mean, people got their preference. Well, this is my preference on this bike, okay. Aftermarket ignition, you know, I don't know. I tend to like OEM stuff because it seems to last better at least that's my experience anyway i'm gonna go ahead and get this uh thing you know this thing right here you know <laughs> get my points gapped i say uh 20 thousandths the manual says so I'm, i've got my feeler gauge right here and i'm gonna go ahead and i got it on the wide lobe which is the rear cylinder so theoretically you're supposed to have 20 thousandths gap on both cylinders whenever the lobe each lobe comes around that is well, so let's hope that this cam is even because sometimes, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Okay, I was wrong. I have it on the front cylinder lobe. I don't know what I was thinking, but it doesn't matter. But it's been a while, but this is starting to come back to me a little bit. Right down here is a, a little notches and stuff. I don't know if you can see it, but where I can, you know, inch this thing a little bit. But I, I'm not going to mess with that just yet. That's for messing with my static timing. But I've got my feeler gauge. The points are open. I'm gonna put my uh, feeler gauge in there. And then I'm gonna undo this screw right here, which you can't see me because my hands are in the way. But you see there's a flathead screw right there. Loosen it up. It's got a good bite on it right there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tighten this screw up right here. All right, that's 
good and tight. I still don't have a lot of drag there, so you want to have some drag going on. I'm going to open it up again. Okay, I'm going to tighten it up some more. Okay, that's good. I'm going to rotate this thing around some more to the wide lobe. And it seems to want to keep going. Which This is my rear cylinder right here. So, feels the same. All right, so that should be good. Okay, that wasn't too bad. So, what I also did that I didn't put it on camera is that I cleaned the points too. Just a simple piece of notebook paper or some bright piece of paper and I stuck it between the points and I just pulled them through. And you can see a little bit of residue on it. And then I took another clean piece of paper and ran it through the points again and I didn't see any residue. So that's typically how I clean them. I'm sure one of you is gonna correct me in the comments about how to do that. But nevertheless, uh, here's what I have also done and this is what I'm gonna do next. Um, I'm going to set my static timing. And what I've done so far is that I didn't film this, but I went ahead and reached over and was operating my Kickstarter right here. You know, this thing. While I had my thumb over the spark plug hole right here until I can feel compression. You know, basically pressure coming past my thumb, which told me that I'm on top dead center, which is where you want to be on your cylinder, on your number one cylinder, that is. And so once I started to feel that, Got to get my flashlight to show you guys this. Now I know some of you guys who own shovel heads already know this procedure, but maybe there's somebody out there who doesn't know what to do with it. Like for instance, <laughs> shade tree surgeon. <laughs> I know you're probably going to watch this. So if you want to go to set your static time and this is how you do it on a shovel, being that yours is the same year as mine. Now you guys just look out for that video. I'm anxious to see it. I hope I didn't leak too much information out though. But anyway, <sighs> I don't know if you can see, I don't have my glasses on, but there's a line right here on the flywheel. You want that line in the middle of that hole right there. So once I got to see that line, it wasn't quite in the middle of the hole yet, but being I had it in gear, I was able to move the rear wheel this way and that until I got it center. So now that I have it center, I'm going to take my multimeter and I'm going to put the positive on the points breaker and the negative, well, on a negative. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this thing to where it's going to make a noise like this. Well, when I do this, and whenever the points breaker opens up, when I adjust that plate in the back, it'll go off. And that way I'll know my static timing is set. So I'm gonna try that. And one more time. A little lighter. Right there, that's where I wanna be. I'm gonna tighten this down. All right, pull that off, tighten this down, and theoretically, it should work. So I'm going to get the condenser in there, and we'll see what happens. Okay, I've got the points in, I've got the static timing set, got everything where I think is satisfactory, but now that I have antique equipment and the ignition, let's see if it'll start up the antique way, namely by kickstarting, because being that these starter systems from back in the 70s and uh, in early 80s or late 60s whatever you know they were new back in their day but undeveloped so because there's so many components involved in a starter system on a shovel head maybe I'll just go ahead and get used to kickstarting this thing first off and then just use a starter whenever you know I get tired of kicking or I get tired of getting kicked back <laughs> but anyway let's see what happens yes Ignition on, gas is on. Cool. I can dig it. 
Now, uh, just in case some of you guys thought that that was easy to do, to get this thing all set up, you know, with the static timing and, you know, get it started off with a kickstart, I'm sure I pretty much looked like a pro, but uh, here's really how it looked. Yeah, you see, I really hardly know what I'm doing when it comes to working on these old machines because I have so been spoiled by the new technology. Now, <laughs> I say new technology, these old machines make my Evos feel like state-of-the-art technology. But here I am, got the point set. I tell you what, it was quite a headache trying to get the static timing set. You guys didn't see that. If you want to retrofit your electronic ignition back to points, if you have a 78, and on up shovel head and even evo you will have to get a special set of points that's meant for that kind of a retrofit because 77 and back the timing mark was completely different on the cam because in 78 they changed the timing mark from the five o'clock position to the seven o'clock position on the camshaft so it set my advance weights in a different position so i had a set of 77 points set and along with the advance weights and I didn't know any better, but it's made my points cam all the way in the 90 degree position away from my points thingy that hits the cam. You know what I'm talking about. At least some of you might know what I'm talking about. Actually, I'm pretty sure all of you know what I'm talking about that ride these old things. But anyway, I want to get used to kickstarting this thing because the technology back then from the 70s, even into the early 80s, especially the 70s, the, the starter system was you know that was the first generation of that kind of electric start technology and it was not refined yet there's so many components involved on using electric start on an old shovel head or even an iron head so i want to get used to using my kickstarter more often just to save on that starter system because i kind of want that to be a last resort a last resort rather it being like you know i get tired of kicking the thing for whatever reason but <laughs> anyway here we are we got the point system set up got the kicker thing set up got my timing set i mean i even went out and bought a timing light i didn't record that for you guys because i really didn't know what i was doing but i got my timing where i need it but i'll tell you how to set it you get a timing light and you get the rpms of the motor to about a thousand to eleven hundred rpms and that little line that i showed you guys in the window you want that thing according to the timing light somewhere in the center in that footage that i showed you where that thing kicked back at me that's because i had this thing set too far in advance so it was wanting to detonate before it even got to where it was going so it kicked me pretty freaking hard the only other thing i had to do on this thing is basically uh well everything else that comes next <laughs> because there's been one thing after another with this motorcycle not that it's the motorcycle's fault like i will still defend its honor a lot of it is my fault because i just don't know what i'm doing i'm learning as i go the hard way and of course when i first fired this thing up oil went every freaking where but that's the way these old bikes are you know you let them sit long enough for about several weeks at a time oil is going to drain from the oil tank into the bottom end and then you're going to fire it up and it's going to blow right out the breather which is kind of cool i don't know i mean <laughs> at least i know it's the nature of the beast to do that i know most of you are mainly fans of electronic ignition and i get you who the heck wants to mess with points this day and age when you can just put something in there and fire it up and go but i like to use stuff that's you know i don't know a challenge maybe it's just that there's no fun 
and new bikes to me. I mean, I, I like it, the fact that I'm riding something right now because I did something to it to get me down the road. I got something that's within my power to fix. Like I said, if I had an ignition problem like I did on the last video, I could just pull over, reset everything, and get going again. Of course, I don't know if that were to happen right now because I forgot to add a set of extra points and condenser in my tool bag. But anyway, that's useless knowledge. I don't know how much rain is getting on my camera right now because, uh, you know, I got this car in front of me because he's throwing up water and stuff. But uh, anyway, I guess I'll just leave you guys like this. I hope you guys like what you saw. And, you know, and if you like this content, if it's your first video of mine, go ahead and hit like and subscribe, all that jargon. You guys keep the rubber side down and be good to yourselves, okay? And thanks a lot.